Hi, it's time for another math easy solution. Uh, Terence goes further into polar coordinates example 9, which looks at the cardioid uh, shape or heart shaped example. And now we'll get part 2 of it, which looks over question A of this question. And also I want to briefly note, uh, you can now uh, view these exact notes at uh, Steemit as an article, and I'll, put the, I'll post that after I upload this video. So it should be there. Uh, by the time you watch this video. And yeah, go there at steemit.com at M-E-S and I'll, uh, I should have it there uh, by, by then. And I'll also put a link to it in the video description below and as well you could always download these notes in PDF as well. So let's look at question A. So again, recall the example states for the cardioid R equals 1 plus sine theta of example 7 and uh, that was my earlier video. Uh, find the slope of the tangent line 1 theta equals to pi over 3. Yeah, so recall from part one, my uh, earlier video, that it, this is how the shape of the cardioid looks like. It looks like a, just an upside down heart. And what we have is if we look at the slope of a tangent line dy over dx, if we put this on a y and x uh, coordinate system, uh, that's what we have dy over dx. But in, co in polar coordinates, uh, the the derivative that, that I derived in my earlier video was dy over dx equals cosine theta, 1 plus 2 sine theta divided by 1 plus sine theta, and then at the bottom times 1 minus 2 sine theta. So now a part A states find the slope to actual value when the theta equals to pi over 3. So again, in polar coordinates, uh, number pi over 3, that is... Yeah, that is about... Uh, that's in radians. That's actually 60 degrees in... Uh, in yeah, in degrees. So, for example, it would should be somewhere about here. So that this should be uh, theta equals to pi over three, and that's uh, in polar coordinates over here. And this is again at r theta like that, or r pi over three. And yeah, now basically part A is what it's asking is find the slope of the tangent line across here, yeah, so this would be dy over dx, uh, and then I'll just put a at theta equals to pi over 3. So that's what we want to find out, is the slope of this tangent line. And again, I'll also just to recap to why this is 60 degrees, you could easily see because the full length, remember, is 180 degrees is pi, so you if you divide it by 3, that's just 60, and pi is just 180 degrees. Pi, this is 180 degrees. Yeah, and I just fixed that uh, up there, just put it pretty small, but pi rad or radians equals 180 degrees, divided by 3 is 60 degrees, or just pi over 3. So anyways, now that we got that out of the way, let's just go ahead and solve A. So, we just plug in that formula, so dy over dx, and I'll just put a uh, sign like this, an arrow equals pi over 3, this equals 2. Yeah, this equals to cosine uh, pi over 3, and then we have a 1 plus 2 sine pi over 3, and then we have a 1 plus sine pi over 3, and then we have a 1 minus 2 sine pi over 3, like that. So now we got to solve these values, and then, uh, but and I've, as I've gone in my earlier video, we could use some uh, trig or absolute trig ratios to recall, and a good way to memorize this is to draw a isosceles triangle with all the sides of equal length 2, but then we'll split this down the middle here so that this is 1, this is 1, so it's exactly symmetric like that. Those are 90 degrees across. Now because uh, this is an isosceles triangle, these all, all the angles add up to 180, so that means, or 180 degrees, or in other words, each of these has to be 60 degrees or pi over 3. So that's pi over 3. And again, uh, as I proved in my earlier video, everything needs to add up to 180 degrees. And I'll put the proof for this in the video description below. You can uh, learn more about that. And now if we split this in, in half, this angle across, yeah, this angle is just pi over 6. That's 30 degrees and pi over 6. Uh, 30 degrees, this is also pi over 6 as well. So anyways, now that we have this, and now this length across, we could solve that using, yeah, the Pythagorean theorem. And in fact, this is actually square root 3, and that's because if we just look at how this is, 1 squared plus square root 3 squared, that's just going to be 1 plus 
well, 3. This equals to uh, 1 plus, and the square roots cancel because of the square. 1 plus 3 equals to 4. In other words, that 4 is equal to, uh, I'll put it on this side, 2 squared. That's a 2. So we have this part here. That's just the Pythagorean theorem. Pythag. Yeah, I was spelling it wrong. So Pythagorean theorem like that. Now that we have that, now we can just use uh, definitions of uh, sine and cosine. So let's put this uh, arrow like this, separate that section. So now we have is uh, sine uh, pi over 3 is just opposite over hypotenuse. That's a square root 3 over 2. Yeah, that's what we have there. Now, now cosine, cosine is adjacent. So cosine uh, pi over 3 equals 2. Um, this is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, that's 1 over 2. So that's what we have. Now we can just throw those inside there. So what we end up having is, so we have dy over dx equals 2. This is at theta equals pi over 3. So cosine pi over 3 is just 1 over 2. Times this by 1 plus sine, then this is 1 minus sine, 2 sine, and that's just 1 plus sine. So we have 1 plus 2 sine is going to be uh, square root 3 over 2. The bottom one here is 1 plus the sine of pi over 3. That's just going to be square root 3 over 2. And now we have 1 minus 2 sine pi over 3 is square root 3 over 2 like that. Yeah, so now we could simplify this further, and I'll just put uh, on this side here, we can cancel the twos across, and also what I'm going to do is multiply this inside here because there's a divided by two there. Uh, this well, I'll just show you what it ends up being. This one over two is the same thing as writing uh, like this. This cancels, so we have one plus square root three. Yeah, square root three. The twos cancel like that. This cancels like that, so we have square root three. We could bring the two down here, so that's the same thing as writing one divided by two here. 1 plus square root 3 over 2. And now we have this part, which is 1 minus square root 3. So now this one, we can just multiply that inside. I'll just save time and do that. This can be 2, and then the 2's cancel like that. So now that, now that we have that, what we can end up doing now is expanding this. So we have equals to 1 plus square root, uh, yeah, 1 plus square root 3. So now 2 times 1 is 2. Just just using the FOIL method, 2 times square root 3 is negative 2 uh, times square root 3. And now we have the, doing the same thing on this side. Square root 3 times 1 is plus square root 3. And then square root 3 times negative square root 3, that's just going to be negative 3. Yeah, so what we have is here, this expands to, well, well this simplifies to, the top's going to remain 1 plus square root 3. And now the bottom, look at the bottom here, we have 2 minus 3 is negative 1. So that simplifies there. Now we have uh, negative 2 times square root 3 plus square root 3. This adds up, so then this becomes negative square root 3 like that. Now if we take out a negative, we get negative uh, and yeah, we'll take out the negative from the bottom. So we have 1 plus square root 3 to the top. Now remove the negative. So we have negative 1, just factor it out, 1 plus square root 3. Now this just cancels. Those are the top and bottom are the same. All we're left with is a negative 1. So this is just equals to 1 over negative 1. Same thing as writing uh, negative 1 like that. So this is the slope. Yeah, so basically what we have is dy over dx uh, at uh, theta equals to pi over 3 equals to negative 1 like that. And you could think of it as a rise over run. And you could think of it as, uh, for example, you could think of it as negative 1 rise over 1 run. In other words, if you start off here, you go, uh, this is a run, and but then the rise is going to be negative. Or you could do it uh, the other way. So rise down here and then move over here. So negative 1 plus 1. So the slope should be something like this. So that's how the slope should be, dy over dx, like that. And in fact, that is how the slope looks like above here. So as you can see, the slope is going down. So it's rise over run as, as, as it should be. So rise down, go right, like that. And this equals 2 
well, equals to negative uh, one. So that, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so you can just visually see it. So anyways, that's all for today. Hopefully you'll learn. In the next video, I'll go over part B, which looks at the points on the cardioid where the tangent line is horizontal or vertical. And as you can see, it should be somewhere across here and here for the vertical. And then the horizontal, we should have three of them, I believe, the top and the bottom two. And also, yeah, I believe something here as well could have a vertical as well. We'll, we'll have to see that. So anyways, thanks for watching. Like always, you can down, download these exact notes in the link below as well as uh, go to Steam it. And I'll try to put the link in the description below for that as well once I upload it. Anyways, thanks for watching and stay tuned for another math easy solution.